Today, I have the wonderful Emma Bushell on the Awaken Feminine podcast. Emma is joining me all the way from England in the UK. Welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? I'm good. We Great had some technical glitch, <laughs> glitches before um, <laughs> we hit record, so we'll see how we go. Uh, seriously, I've never seen anything like it. So it was, um, <laughs> I think the energy is just like, yeah, is the energetics. So um, we're just really excited about how the video will turn out with the <laughs> podcast. But Emma, before we get started, I would love for you to just do a quick introduction for our audience um, so they know who you are and what you do. Sure. Well, thank you so much. Hi, everybody. I'm Emma Bushell and I am a soul-led, soul-purpose leader and very much with awakened women. So it's it's not at the initial stages of awakening. It's mainly when you've awoken. And um, it's the grappling of finding yourself within your resistance of energetics that you work through what, what, what you know, what symptoms that, that presents itself with when you're awakening, because some of it can be really scary and fearful, and some of it can actually be quite pleasant. <laughs> so it's the fluctuation of energies that I work with um, and people come to me with these areas of um, really questioning where they are and what they're doing and how they're going to be once they've gone through this awakening process, which can take for some a long time, but for others it can take relatively shorter time. So I... Um, I lead people through um, the, I call it resistance energies, to become in a calmer, more relaxed, flowful state so that they can really fully accept more in a calm way their energy to receive mm. what it's about and how it's playing out for them in their soul-led purpose of life. Yeah. Um, and that's where I, I work with people to make sure they're they're basically guiding them through that process in all of the bumps and all of the loveliness of pathways that you have within an awakening. Yes. Um. So it's quite a big job. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite a big job, um, but you do it beautifully. Um, I met you, you because um, we met because I saw you flash up on my Facebook feed um, with one of something that you're doing. And I'm like, oh, I need to do that. So I booked a session with you and I was like, wow, this woman is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and here you are on my podcast. So, um, yeah, the work that you do is much needed. And, um, yeah, it's um, truly definitely soul-led and very you're very um, tapped in, you know, to get receive all the messages um, yeah. that needs to come through. Thank you. I mean, my energetics, as we've experienced coming on here, is um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've, you know, I read energy. I read and I'm psychically drawn to where people are holding resistance and, and, and knowing intrinsically how to clear it for somebody so that they can actually have a better ride of things in their human. You know, it's it, it, when people struggle against an, an emotion, especially an awakening, they're really fighting against not feeling comfortable. And it's in your discomfort that a lot of people find me because I'm able to psychically alchemize that energy to make it a little bit clearer and cleaner for them to be comfortable in. Mm. Um, so I have that ability to do that um, with spirit and I'm guided quickly to clear it. Seriously, huh. Emma, I don't know what is happening like with this, like with you on. I've got this weird thing at the back of my head. Like I just feel this like <laughs> energy at the back of my head. And I'm like, okay, usually like when I talk to guests, I'm like, oh, I'm getting full body goosebumps and that's kind of normal. But like I'm just like <laughs> getting some weird thing at the back of my head. I'm like, this is a bit different. <laughs> yeah. So, um, that's just, um, that's more about your beautiful guides that are around you, honey. Mm. 
Uh, so Emma, before Being we playful. dive in, dive in even more with our conversation, I, I would love for you to answer this question for me first, which is what is your definition of an awakened feminine? Oh my word. Awakened has so many levels and it is a process and it really is about becoming more aware the heightened level of awareness to your way that you've been operating in radically changes and it forces you to look within because all that you knew in front of you isn't the same. And that can be from an experience that's been very traumatic, a change or a massive global event like we've just had and still are going through, or it can just be a slow, gradual realisation that actually you've outgrown situations and experiences of with other people and environments because you just don't resonate with them anymore. And it can hit you like that. It doesn't have to be so traumatic. And the awakened feminine is more about finding out who you are as your soul being. So your soul knows, but to have your awakening, your soul knew that it was ready to awaken, right? Mm. <laughs> this is where I sit. Yeah. And it's really then finding as a human, your place within the world that you're in or your environment that you're in, that's already been built up, like your family, whatever, and finding your place to be with that level of awareness that has totally changed. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful um, definition. Yes. Yeah, finding your beauty within it rather than always being a fight. Mm. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I know the <laughs> fight. I have experienced the fighting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Very normal. Yes. We, I have. We, a yeah. lot of women, a lot of people, not just women, men yeah. have to. Yeah. And just like kicking and screaming, going, no, 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 no. <laughs> and then you just kind of go, all right, fine. I, you know, just go with whatever <laughs> I meant to yeah. be going with. I, yeah. I call that being soul tired. Mm. <laughs> it's like almost like you've gone through so much without being too heavy sufferance mm. of resisting the new way of looking at things that you've been so knackered with your soul. <laughs> That you've almost gone, all right then. I'm done. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Just it's, like... it's really finding the beauty of that. Just re relaxing into the fight. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes. Um, like what I was telling you about um what I'm what I'm going into um this year and um I mean, like fighting, fighting it for like months, getting the same answer. And finally, I'm like, fine, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what's happened since, you know? Yeah. Well, now it's like, all right, just going deep into um, learning what I need to learn so that I can actually bring it to life. But um, yes, it's all very amazing. Yeah. I want to ask you, um, can you can you give us um a bit about your awakening because oh, or yeah um that, did you that big time <laughs> yeah were you always connected or like was like was there a point when that happened and yeah can you talk a bit about that because I'm just so interested to know your story yeah yeah of course um I would say I probably had about eight awakenings. And what I mean by that is um, it's, a, it's really about your alignment in this. Now, mine is, has been this fighting situation <laughs> in my awakenings because I wasn't ready to be leading with this. 
And I had to be in the experience of my human to gather all of the skills and knowledge and experience that I bring to be able to know in all levels of dark energy and light energy that I talk about of how I can then really fully hold the space and on a mass level space of healing with others because I've done it. So my experience started very, very naively and beautifully as a child with spirit. Um, from For as long as I remember, um, I, I don't know what age, but it's very young from about five up. I was always with spirit. Mm. And I just thought this was very normal and beautiful and really... Um, I didn't sleep a lot at night because that's when they come. Mm. <laughs> so you were so very I was tired as a child. Child, <laughs> but um, you know, I I was, I just thought it was really normal to have conversation, and and actually have conversations and prayers with God as a child. Mm. It was very normal for me to do that. Yeah, and the essence of that total belief as a child was in its fullest, purest intention. Mm. So I found that things happened for me because I really prayed and it was, I I asked and I received. Mm. It really was like that as a child with me. The difficulty I had then was my, because I'm also a creative and I create um, a lot in my work um, visually. I wanted to share this with the most dearest of my beings, which is my family. And the response was very much shutting it down. Mm. You've got too big of imagination. What are you talking about? To me feeling very, very, very isolated. Yeah. really young mm. um and i had this a uh, wondrous lovely experience of spirit that was then became my own i didn't talk about it because mm. i couldn't talk about it yeah and i just went on having a lovely relationship with spirit but then the fear of that not fitting in with my family of a belief that I shouldn't be talking to spirit, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, really grew and built up as an illusion in my mind as a very young child. Because we're talking really young. Mm. And the fear outgrew the light mm. for me. And I shut it off. Mm. And the alignment then comes into play. <laughs> so the, my journey through life has been very much on a creative level, but it's I've always woven holistic learning in my evening work or mm. my capability to learn uh, after my work. Yeah. I've done that all the way through my life. I've always been learning something to make sure I'm connected. Yes. But in my day job, I wasn't. Mm. So there's the light and the dark of separation almost in an energetics I'm talking. Mm. Where you have this separateness. And for years I've become, I was like that and it was very normal. Mm. Um, but with that became awakenings to spirit wanting me to push forward with things more yeah. and more. So it's really managing that in your life and being able to earn sleep from something that is spiritual mm. as well came into that. Yeah. Still not speaking about it either. Yeah. So can I ask you just quickly um, before you go on? So when you shut it, you said you shut it down. So did you 
lose your connection with spirit or when you say shut it down, what did you mean by that? Yeah, I stopped it and it was glimpses then in my work that I then did a self-development. Um, for example, I set up a business uh, in my early 20s um, as, as a holistic therapist with mm. um, um, holistic massage. Mm. <laughs> Uh, this was way before the Reiki days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was finding that I was having massive spiritual um, downloads of energy for my clients. Yeah. As I was massaging. Yeah. And fundamentally, it was just like, oh, my God, what do I do with this? It's so strong. Mm. And it was harnessing that to be able to go and find someone to help me mm. with it. In that in in those days, and I'm not that old, but it was yeah. it wasn't like it is now. Yeah, there wasn't any sanctuary for talking about this stuff. Mm. Like so much of this isn't talked about fully mainstream now. Yeah, it was pretty non-existent, and the only the only thing that you found was connected to the church. Oh, <laughs> I found. Which probably doesn't quite fit in with what you what you do. No, but it was more about my spiritual connection and mm. what was going on. Yeah, and um, how could I manage it? Because it was really strong. Yeah. So when you shut it down, did it come back online when you started doing your holistic therapies, or like? Oh when, yeah. How did? Yeah. It was in the moment of my work. Mm. rather yeah. than me talking to spirit all a lot ah uh, okay it would became very much like when i did the act of what i did as a therapeutic exercise and beautiful treatment mm. it would be full on mm. and then it would come off ah yes that's what i wanted to get at so when when did it come back on for you to communicate with spirit like um, well, unfortunately, I've been in this state of awakenings in fight mode mm. um, because I didn't want to really honour, if I'm being really honest, honour my true soul's purpose of being here mm. because I thought, how could I do that in my setup with what I was in? So I got married and um you know i still wove my spiritual spiritual business on the side but i didn't really i couldn't really still couldn't talk about it because i wasn't able to bring that into my marriage mm. <laughs> wow yeah and then i ended up i just couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't be the person that I wasn't. Mm. The should be's and the the care, the the dutifuls and the the pleasings and the <laughs> um the being there for everyone but no one for yourself kind of mm. woman. Yeah. Yeah. Um and I just thought, you know what, I've got to get out of this. And I divorced my husband. Mm-hmm. Uh, not wanting to, but knowing I had to, actually, yeah. for me. Yes. Um, I couldn't go around like that anymore. And it was the biggest shock to my family because the Emma that they knew, because mm. it was like an illusion for them because I hadn't talked about all of this stuff. Mm. They knew I was spiritual, but they were just like, oh, that's Emma. Yeah. It's very passed off. was like, oh, my God. How could Emma actually ever do that? Yeah. So it's breaking the silence, dispersed the illusion of mm. what you're actually holding in your life, of not really fully fulfilling yourself. Yeah. Fundamentally, and loving you at all of this. 
mm. to be able to live with that truly yeah it's really about accepting yourself for who you are but it was everyone it was interwoven yeah I mean, when people say when you spiritually awaken you fall out with your mate or whatever I mean, this is like my whole family yeah. network. Yeah. So <laughs> tell me, like, so then what happened? Did, so you got a divorce. Were you, st- were you able to then speak up about it or how, you know, how long did it take you to go, right, I, I'm, this, this is me, this is, I mean, because, Obviously, now the Emma that I know, you just talk about, you know, you just talk yeah. about it like normal. Huge, like, right? how long was the gap between you, like, going, I can't do this anymore, divorcing your husband, to like really just going, this is me, this is all of me, and you take it or leave it? Um, well, unfortunately, what's happened since is that I don't, I don't speak to my family. In that uh-huh. in that period, so my connection I severed it, yeah, um, because it wasn't for my highest good at all, mm. um, and um, I then probably within three years. So when was COVID? Twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Yeah. So it was probably um, the end of 2019. I divorced my husband in 2018. Mm. Mm. And unfortunately, or, you know, I can say that that happened and I've also gone through some of those people in my family who have passed, yeah. including my husband, uh. ex-husband, yeah. Um, and that was major as well because it was almost like cementing the end of things but i've awoken yes and i'm free to speak hmm wow that's yeah. major stuff <laughs> major events that you had to go through yeah and then we had covid so it get really downtime on my other business because I run another business as well as my Mm. spiritual business and um really just learning as much as I could in the positive time that we had even though it was very difficult Mm. um I made sure that I made sure of the time we had because we're never going to get it back yeah and really put that impact to the now Mm. and where I sit to be able to talk freely yeah. about other women's awakenings and and supporting their resistance in all ways with energy mm. and really getting them on track yeah with their purpose yeah what were um some of the healing tools or modalities or you know things that you did that really helped you to kind of move forward and heal and, yeah, get oh through. Goodness. Okay, so I, all the way through COVID, I volunteered to read tarot for uh, a very big um, company in Australia, actually, that was is global. And I read for free all the way through COVID for people oh, wow. struggling. Mm. Um, so I read tarot for them all the way through COVID until I came back to work because my business was shut down. Mm. And um, I then um, started to do my set work. So I started with my mind, which was um, I, I became qualified as a coach of NLP on mm. neuro linguistic programming as a practitioner. Yeah. Um, just to harness myself in my own way of thinking and my own self-talk Mm. I try it always on myself first. Yes. <laughs> like we do. Yeah. And then um, I found that to be very masculine, very mechanical, very structured, and it stopped actually my flow of channeling. 
it oh, stopped wow. my flow of connection. Um, and I thought, gosh, you know, I can't, I can use these modalities, but yet I found that the the channel that I was in, it was too structured for me. Mm. But you take those bits of it, right? Mm. Um, I then went on to do a, um, a practitioner level in Reiki. Um, yeah. So I'm now a practitioner of that. But with that, I've now <laughs> created my own um, my own modality of healing within mm. that space of energetics. So I've always sat in that space. Yeah. So I went on to do that to then create source has created this amazing modality that I use now on 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 women that come to me called Sacred Heart Achievements. Mm. Uh, so I concentrate on your on your energetics of your heart almost wow. uh, within that modality. And then I went on to do uh, the subconscious work with a, a well-known leader of um, heart healing. Mm. And I completed that with her to do subconscious work, which is ancestral, generational, mm. patterning. Yeah. <laughs> All mm. of the things. Yeah. Visibility, you name it. Yeah. And then um, I've done a lot of energetics work and connections to spirit with a, a well-known spiritual leader um that really just she was the woman i needed when i found the church uh. <laughs> all these years later but funny <laughs> enough our stories are she also went to find it at the church oh wow don't you love this synchronicity yeah and that is amazing because we both had that conversation about what was around and there was nothing around. <laughs> but when you're actually in this fray of what is going on, I've got to go and see somebody. <laughs> yeah. Um, you That was it. Yeah. So it's amazing how that person I've met all this time later was going through the same thing. Yeah, I love it. But she now leads with connecting to spirit. Yeah, properly. Yes, <laughs> I love it. It. I mean, now there are there are so many amazing teachers and healers and people that can help. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I my proper awakening, I guess, started in twenty twenty. Um. I was, you know, it was like what you're saying before. Sometimes it's like some for some people it's slow and some people it's like quite quick. Mine was over a period and then like 2020 was just like boom, <laughs> like just bring everything on. Um, so, yeah. But, you know, even when I started my awakening, there were so many um, people out there already. But since then it's just like there's like so many also there's a need for discerning which one who is genuine as well I think and actually do know their stuff yeah the good thing is right the good thing that I take from that is mm. that people can talk about it yeah yes I mean look look at this situation here yeah we're doing right now yeah there's all of these people out there doing, saying and doing, but you know what? Some of that I just think, thank God they're saying about it. Mm. Um, because the need to connect with some, I wish that I, that was there when I was looking because mm. that wasn't, this didn't, this wasn't yeah. birth. The internet wasn't birth. <laughs> so actually, yeah, you have all will always have the I call them the dark energetics, right? Mm. You will always have the discernment of um people that um goes against the integrity of, of spirit. And that um, is very unfortunate. That is part of living in in on earth <laughs> in the world. Yeah. People's have their motives and agendas, right? So yes. um the the 
the surety is the fact that there is a place that people can find something to help them. Yeah. Because people are talking about it. Yes. And I think I also find that, you know, sometimes you might not pick the right person for you, but you learn the lesson from that and then you end up finding the person that you're meant to, you know, be you had you probably had to see that go to the wrong you know so-called wrong person to find the right person but really yeah. that wrong person was the right person anyway <laughs> yeah um yeah that's just life um it had, can happen anywhere right yeah yeah it's just part of your radar <laughs> yeah um, uh, yeah, you get to know about it, right? Yeah. I wanted to ask you this um this question came up like early in the piece when you were talking about um what you do and you work with women that have already awakened, not at the beginning of their awakening. Can you um unpack a bit why you only work with women who have awakened and not at the beginning stages? It's the awoken woman. It's the woman that's just started to become aware of. Because I have people in my group that are observers. They're the curious mm. because they have awoken, but they they're just trying to figure it out. Mm. And they just need to connect, like mm. we talked about before, finding a place to connect and talk about what they're going through and what they're feeling. Yeah. Um. And you, I normally find those women are there. They're always there. They don't might not speak, but they're always there. And they have awoken, and but they need somewhere to go. Yeah. Until they're ready to go. Yeah. Do you know what I need to? I need. I need this from may not be me it may be another person that they need to connect with first it's a journey right yeah but they they're they're with you because they resonate and until they're ready and you offer that service for them they go yeah i'm ready to deal with this now it's more about the disorientation that you go through it's mm. very unsettling for a lot of women yeah yeah so yeah uh, and that's why I think it's really crucial to say that there are always places you can observe yes. before you're ready to go into your own healing. Because yes. you can self-heal a lot by observing, just by feeling like you're not on your own in it. Mm. That is huge for, yes. for a lot of us. Yes. Because it does get really lonely and you think that you're the only person in the whole world going through it when there are many, many people that are feeling exactly the same way as you. Yeah, and it's finding those places. My mission really is to make it more accessible for people to find you. Mm. Funny enough. <laughs> Because that really was a massive part of me struggling with my awakening on my own. Yeah. Not finding a place to be in it. Yeah. Um, it's making that more visible for access for people that just haven't found the right people. Mm. I just love how your story is like a full circle where you started and you're like, there's no one. And now you're being the leader that you didn't have. So you're kind of like <laughs> back, back at the that? beginning. You're back at the beginning, but you're the leader that you were looking for. So I think that's really beautiful. Um, yeah. Isn't, yeah. It, isn't it ironic? Yeah. But it's... <laughs> It's um, it's beautiful. It's it's just, and I, I loved how we started it and then ended it right here. And I think is a, you know, I'm just looking at the time as well. It was just like perfect yeah. timey timing that we just ended up with that, um, last part. Um, Emma, thank you so much for 
sharing oh, your love so and wisdom welcome. with us today. It's just a, such a fun conversation and just learning about your journey and, you know, all the things that you've had to go through to become the leader that you are today for the women that were like, that are, were like, well, are like you when you started. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like trying to, were, are, yeah. I know. Uh, I yeah. Know. So before we wrap Thank up, you. No, I wanted to ask welcome. you, is there anything else that you want to share with our audience? Um, like any last words that you want um, them to take away? Yeah, I think it's the fact that you don't have to do this on your own. Yeah. Because it makes, it can make it go into areas that it didn't start off with. Mm. And you don't need to go those places. Yeah. Because it is very accessible to access not being on your own in an awakening. Thank and you. that's really key. <laughs> yes, very, very important. So thank you for that. And lastly, what is currently setting your soul on fire? <laughs> speaking, speaking, speaking a truth. Yeah. Uh, hearing other women speaking their truth. Mm. Um, yeah. That have a lot to say um, and they are very much lead will lead the way in their work because of it yeah that's beautiful thank you emma and <laughs> if people want to find out more about you or how they can work with you or just you know simply just to connect with you where's the best place to go um so i've been currently having a brand new um membership offerings platform built so this is only newly built from the end of last year mm. So it's being added to as we're talking <laughs> with my offerings, but it's um it's on Podia. I, I need to give you a link. Yes, you can give it to me um, and I can just put it in the show notes. Yeah. yeah. Under my name, Emma Bull. And it's a platform where you can find me um and connect with me. I do do monthly sacred heart attunements. Um, in a very lovely, beautiful space of energetics in a in a group. Mm. Um, and they are themed every month to give accessibility for people needing a place of healing. Mm. Um, and they are very current with what you're going through on a resistance level, but also on a on a a sole purpose level of of really looking ahead. Yeah. where you can be with your awakening as well it's not all about um the horrible stuff it's about where you where you're going to go with this because mm. that really drives you out with your passion you know yeah um so that platform's there i do offerings of readings soul purpose readings akashics yeah. all sorts um and one to ones they're all there yeah Amazing. I'll have all your details in the show notes so yeah, people can you. reach out to you. Thank you so much, Emma. And we made it thank through you. with no glitches. <laughs> and how's your spirit guides now? Yeah, um, they they kind of settled down after probably the first um, 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> lovely. Aww. Thank you so much, Emma. Yeah, you're welcome. Really lovely to connect with you and everybody listening. <laughs>